This video will provide a quick overview of the National Convergence Technology Center's student portfolio pilot project that ran 2019 to 2021. A little bit about the National CTC. We are funded by a grant from the National Science Foundation. The CTC has been a national IT center since 2012. We support IT infrastructure programs at colleges across the country. Specifically, we want to help programs align curriculum with workforce needs in their region. We also manage an IT educator community of practice, collaborate with a group of national IT business leaders, and offer a number of free faculty professional development events. So for this student portfolio project, our BUILT, that's our business and industry leadership team of IT employers, our BUILT wanted to know if job applicants with the portfolio get hired more quickly than an applicant who goes into an interview with only a resume. The BILT has long advocated students create portfolios of their classwork to more clearly and concretely demonstrate their ability in an interview. And so for our renewal grant, we wrote this pilot project into the grant goals. We had seven schools participate across the country. We've had the students divided into a treatment group that would all receive the same content, and this was across a variety of IT classes. And then also for comparison, we'd have a control group. After each term, we surveyed the students and the participating faculty teaching the content, which helped us adjust and refine the pilot as we went along. And then of course, we had what we called employment audits each December as we tried to determine how many students had gotten hired. Here's what the treatment group received. All of this was developed by Louise Kowalski at SUNY Erie Community College in New York. She taught modules to teach students how to create LinkedIn profiles, maintain a professional online presence, develop a personal brand, and then create and curate e-portfolios of their work. Here's a breakdown by year. We had over 1,200 students involved with a 58-42 split between treatment and control. The project ran across six terms from spring 2019 to fall 2021. Let's talk about a few survey results. As you might expect, treatment students who received Luis's modules were more likely than students in the control group to believe they had created a properly updated LinkedIn profile. That clearly conveys their personal brand. Across the 2021 treatment and control groups who didn't have a LinkedIn profile, we asked why not. Here are some of the responses. As we'd expect to see, treatment students who received Luis's modules were more likely than control students to believe they have an e-portfolio they could use in an interview. Across the 2021 treatment and control groups who didn't have an e-portfolio, we asked why not. Here are some of those responses. As you can see for both the LinkedIn and e-portfolios, a common theme among those who didn't have these ready was the perception that they weren't ready or didn't have enough yet to show or weren't sure what to show. The survey suggested that without these modules, many in the treatment group would have never created a LinkedIn profile on their own. Also, there seemed to be the added benefit taking the time to make the profiles may have instilled additional confidence in a student's technical ability. The treatment students all found the modules simple to do and reported they found them valuable. Faculty agreed that these modules were simple and valuable. As I mentioned, each December, we asked the faculty to go back and look at all of the students to date who have been a part of this program and determine their employment status. This got a little complicated. So here we have the student cohorts on the left and the audit dates on the right. That top row is our 2019 students. 
And because they were first, they were audited three times, December 2019, December 2020, and December 2021. We used the term audit, but how the faculty determined employment status was up to them. They may have looked students up on LinkedIn or had conversations with them in the hallway. These December audits proved to be the biggest challenge. It was time consuming for faculty. It was time consuming for us to organize what the faculty reported. It took us a while to figure out the best way to collect and organize the employment information. Obviously, the easiest way to see if someone has a job is to visit LinkedIn, but not all the students were on LinkedIn. And then, of course, there was the fact that students were getting hired before graduation, and it wasn't always clear what role, if any, an ePortfolio might have played in getting a job. But in the end, even with our small sample size, we did determine that more students from the treatment group got employed in IT compared to students from the control group. 16% of the treatment students got IT jobs compared to only 2% of the control group. Again, we recognize that it's hard to parse all of the different factors that go into getting a job. The ePortfolios may have played a, only a small role. Along the way, we created a few videos to support this work. The last one came out of discussions we had with the faculty who saw a gap in training for the students. They have ePortfolios, but they didn't necessarily know how to use them in an interview. So we interviewed a few of our employers to get some suggestions on ways to leverage ePortfolios. A few lessons learned from this project. No surprise here, it's hard to track students once they graduate. As mentioned, it's hard to know what factors got someone hired. The faculty agreed that Luis's modules worked better in a 16-week class. Eight-week classes were already so jam-packed there was no room to squeeze in even short and simple modules. The faculty noticed that some students were more into the modules. Students closer to the graduation and students in internship classes were understandably more motivated to make LinkedIn profiles and ePortfolios. Ideally, these modules would be introduced in first year classes so that students could add to their LinkedIn and ePortfolios as they worked through the programs and took classes. And finally, as we discussed, students may need additional help working out strategies to use the ePortfolios in an interview. We have a pretty detailed summary report with more survey numbers and further explanation for how this all worked. You can use the QR code on the screen or the tiny CC link to access the report. Thank you for your time.